You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856 227 1360. Your opinion counts at 856 227 1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. 
Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome to the safe space for conservatives called the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I am Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. Indeed, 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 we are everywhere. We are everywhere. And joining me today as my co-host is the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and that's George Landreth. George, welcome to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. It is always great to be here. Great to have you with me, George. Great to have you with me. So, George, I know there's never anything to talk about in the news, so what shall we do today? I don't know. I was thinking we should do like they used to do, the, you know, with the maybe filibuster, you know, like they used to. We right. could just start reading out of the phone book, reading <laughs> recipes, our favorite recipes from our childhood. Right. Read Dr. Seuss books, whatever. Read there's just not much man. to talk about anymore. I can't believe it. It's really disappointing how little there is to talk about. Well, I was watching a little bit of the the vote in the Senate today to cut off the filibuster. And people have to be reminded, who are the real obstructionists, George? Who are the real obstructionists? Barack Obama, while he was in office, appointed 200 judges to the bench. Only two of them, only two of them were rejected. Okay? Okay. That's better than 99% of all his choices sailed through. Oh, no. These Democrats, now they got, they they don't like what's going on, you know. Uh, by the way, Judge Gorsuch, when he was appointed to the federal bench, he got 100% of the votes, okay. But the obstructionist Democrats today, oh, they're whining and crying and oh things aren't fair George I hope the Republicans have a long memory because there may be a time in our history when the Democrats take back control of of Congress and I want to see the Republicans do the same thing that the Democrats are doing now I really do well you know the uh, symbol of course of the party is an elephant, and elephants supposedly have long memories. So one can only right. hope that that, uh, that 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 has some significance here. I agree with you. It'd be nice if we have long memories. One of the things that people occasionally people talk about, we shouldn't do this and so forth. And my, I just want to remind everyone, this has already been done. The Democrats were doing this. Um, the only reason why they didn't invoke this rule on Supreme Court justices is. If you recall, the Republicans allowed Sotomayor and Elena Kagan mm-hmm. to go forward. Yeah, they basically agreed that when the president wins the election, he gets to make appointments. Yeah, and unless his appointments are unqualified, now I would argue they are unqualified, but for different reasons. I'm not suggesting they didn't go to a, a reasonably good law school and so forth. So I'm not saying they're blittering idiots, but I think that you're not qualified to be a judge if you don't understand civics. And if you understand that civics have – well, the founders were interested in limiting power in a number of ways. Correct. And and they did that for Congress. They gave them short terms. They were not lifetime appointments. They gave them very specific powers that they could do. They could coin money. They could regulate interstate commerce. They could, you know, raise an army and a navy, et cetera. Um, That's how they limited their power. They limited the court's power differently. They gave them lifetime appointments, so they did not limit them in time. They limited them by only giving them judicial power. No legislative power, no executive power, only the ability to adjudicate disputes between parties. So um, the courts, of course, in recent years and in the last many decades have begun more and more to take on the powers of a super or an uber legislature. And you see this now even as an uber um, executive. 
and they decide that uh, you know what the president <laughs> does, what Congress does. No, 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 we're not doing that. The people's voice, none of that silly talk. I think I'm smarter. I know the better result. This is what should have happened. We see that in the uh, in the uh, travel executive order, etc. That that. So, the bottom line is, my attitude would be is I would vote no, not because I I feel like the president shouldn't be able to pick who he wants. I would vote no because he has to pick someone who's qualified. And if you can't pass a high school civics exam about separation of powers and the Constitution, you sure as heck cannot be a member of the Supreme Court or any court for that matter. I don't want you on a traffic court. So that's the, that would be my – so I think Republicans, one, need to take that stance, the one I just described. Yeah. And two, I think that um, we ought to um, – uh, as you said, be a little more long memory here. The Democrats have been very good at obstruction, and they complain about Republican obstructionism, and you gave the perfect stat as to how that's not possible. The Republicans let him stack the court with people who were professionally qualified, but not civically. In other words, professionally meaning, yes, they went to a good law school. Yes, they graduated. Yes, they're reasonably intelligent people. They're not like, you know, mentally impaired. But they do not understand, or if they don't, under, if they do understand, they reject the basic lessons of civics, and you cannot do that and hold federal office, in my view. Totally agree. Totally agree, George. And in, in, for years and years and years, uh, there was a term that went on in Washington: gridlock. Gridlock. You know how Washington was gridlocked. Do you remember that, George? You don't oh, hear yeah. you don't hear that anymore, George. But what you're seeing is you're seeing where the true gridlock, gridlock, the true obstructionists are coming from, and that is coming from the left, coming from Chuck Schumer and the Democrat Party. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at it, Republicans generally try to follow the rules and play by the rules. That's part of their DNA because they're not moral relativists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the left, not everybody who votes for the left is. I've got some friends who are Democrats who go to church on Sunday and believe in the Ten Commandments, and they don't believe they get to define what's right and wrong. I understand that. So no one needs to call me up and say, you know, I know somebody. I'm talking about the base of the party. The base of the party are moral relativists, which means they reject the notion that there is a right and wrong that is external to them. And as a result of that, rules don't matter that much, and following the procedure doesn't matter that much. Results matter. So as a result... If you're Barack Obama, then spying on and de, you know, classifying information and spreading it out so it gets out to hamper your political adversary is okay, even if it violates law and all yep. the historic uh, standards we've had. Because after all, what matters is your version of what the world should look like, and if this it promotes your version of the world, it doesn't matter if you get there by hook or crook. It's a okay, it's fine, and and. Whereas on our side, that doesn't happen as often. And when it has happened, when someone plays fast and loose with the rules, we usually deal with it. I just want to remind folks, Richard Nixon resigned from office, not because Democrats hounded him from office, but because a group of Republicans went to him and said, sir, it's over. We will not stand yeah. by this. Now, my question is, where were the people who, when Barack Obama was using the power of government to, to target people, said that to him. Said, Where no, no, sir, you can't do this. It's got to stop. Right. We can't, we can't abide by this. Of course, no one. When were, where were the people who should have done this with, uh, with, with uh, President Clinton? Nobody. They all stood up and acted like they're protecting the Constitution. Well, the, the rules are not the same for both sides, George are not the same for, for both sides. You look at the things that are going on in Washington with Michael Flynn and Susan Rice, all the crying and complaining about Michael Flynn. Where's all that righteous indignation now when all this garbage is coming out about Susan Rice? Not happening. Not happening. Oh, yeah. And um, then with, it's, it's, it's amazing. Basically, Michael Flynn's transgression was to his employer, meaning when his employer said, hey, what's up? He didn't give him the full, complete scoop. He was a little less complete in what he should have told him. But he didn't break laws. Here, Susan Rice, or someone, if not her, 
has violated the law. How do you know that? That's just a given. Mm -hmm. This information should not have been out in the public. When the government tracks uh, conversations, they can do that legally, but they cannot publish that for the for the general public. And, and George, if there is an investigation of Susan Rice, if there is a prosecute a prosecution of Susan Rice, I know what they're going to say. Oh, they're only doing it because she's a woman. They're only doing it because she is a mar- minority. This is racist. This is sexist. That's what yeah, they're going to say, George. They've already started saying this silly stuff. I mean, I, I, I have to say to anyone out there who's on the left, if you go to that argument, you've lost – you are basically you're sticking on your forehead. I'm well, a dummy lost, sign. But they always go you're to that saying argument. don't take me seriously because I'm too stupid. Hey George, break time right here, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth. Yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC thirteen sixty in Philadelphia, and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting Talk Stream Live. SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. Today's show, like all our shows, is being brought to you by the First Amendment and protected by the Second. George and I will be right back with more news and commentary. I really don't care. That's my prerogative. They say I'm but I... The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty Health Share. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the Indiana Republican Assembly. And I'm her husband, J.D. Manier. We won the election, but we must now install President Trump's nominees. We urge you to call the Capitol Switchboard at 202-225-3121 and ask your senators to do their job. They need to confirm Judge Neil Gorsuch and remaining cabinet members. We the people never want to see another Berkeley. The First Amendment doesn't give you the right to commit acts of violence. It pains us to watch anarchy unfold on college campuses, bus stops, and coffee shops. Thomas Jefferson said, All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Let us join in unity to pray for America. Once again, the number to call is 202-225-3121. 
You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. <coughs> Excuse me, with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, please check out our websites. Do it now. CCRshow.com or CCRS Network. Check out our websites now is what I was talking about. Or at 11 a.m., you can log on to Red Nation Rising Radio. Or at midnight, RedStateTalkRadio.com. Or you can hear our show any time of the day from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. So, George, what's your take on um, Nunez resigning? I have been in meetings all morning. Did he resign this morning? Yeah, that's that's the word out there. Really? Resigned. I missed that one. Wow. Yeah. Um, so he's yeah, resigning he from Congress or resigning as chairman? Yeah, he's pulling out of the investigation. Um, yeah, he shouldn't do that. Um, he didn't do anything that was... Um, Inappropriate. I, I don't understand why he's doing that. Because um, it's it, why this is, this is out. why the left behaves the way they do. They behave badly. I mean, ask yourself what would happen. Let's pretend that I'm a young parent, a young father, and um, I have a child who constantly throws temper tantrums, throws himself on the floor, screams and yells, behaves like a complete lunatic, and every time. I offer him milk and cookies and say, I'm really sorry. Here's some milk and cookies. Please stop. Yeah. Will he please stop? Or will Uh, I get more of that cruddy, lousy, spoiled behavior? This is from the Washington Compost. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin uh, Nunes, I guess it's pronounced, temporarily recused himself Thursday from all matters related to the committee's ongoing probe into the Russian interference in the presidential election, of course, which never happened, as House investigators look into ethics charges against him. The House Ethics Committee released a statement Thursday saying it had determined to investigate allegations that Nunes may have made unauthorized disclosures of classified information in violation of the House rules, laws, regulations, and other standards of conduct. That from the Washington Compost. So, him talking with the President of the United States about what he saw is a violation of House rules, which demands that, that he step aside. But violating criminal laws over in the executive branch with Barack Obama and his appointees... Is there, there's nothing really to see there. We should move along. Nothing wrong there. Nothing to see. Move on, people. Just move the, on. Nothing these are not the droids you're no. looking for. Nope. 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 So, again, if it was a Democrat doing the same thing, oh, made a mistake, misunderstanding. It's always, did you ever notice, George, it's always a misunderstanding. Oh, we right. had the right intentions, just went about it the wrong way. Well, that, that's why I say when you when, when Republicans give in to Democrats, they are effectively handing the spoiled brat cookies and milk. Indeed. And then they act shocked and amazed that next week they pull the same stunt again or the next day. Yeah. Until Republicans basically bust them in the chops. I'm not suggesting you that with your children. Um, they, they're going to keep doing this. I mean, you can't pay them to misbehave. You can't pay them to act like complete morons. And, and, and ultimately, um, the fact that we put up with this uh, begs the question of who's really the moron. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. So what else is on your radar screen? Well, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I, I think that uh, we can all kind of bank on the fact that uh, by uh, tomorrow night before we go to bed, the uh, Supreme Court will have nine justices again. Um, so that's a good thing. Yes. Um, and I suspect that will help with some of the uh, 
uh, strat legal strategies because uh, you may recall some people have pointed out well there's no sense in him uh, repe- appealing this to the Supreme Court because mm-hmm. it'll end in a 4-4 tie and then when it ends in a tie that just means we go back to the the previous ruling correct um, so it would seem to me that we don't have to worry about 4-4 ties as much anymore um, since there's you know nine justices um, but um I, you know, this whole Susan Rice thing kind of, it, it, to me, is fairly amazing. When you listen to the left um, say that they're just picking on her because the, she's a woman. They're just picking on her. It's it's a little bit like Bonnie and Clyde, and you put a wanted poster up of, of Bonnie, and they say, come on, you just hate women. It's like, I know you're right. The fact that she's robbed banks and killed a, a, a couple dozen people has nothing to do with it. We totally miss that. We just don't like women. I mean, th- and this is the same argument. I mean, it's just these people are shameless. That argument is a shameless argument, and nobody who has a shred of decency or is informed even remotely would make such an argument. It's an insanely idiotic it's an embarrassing argument, and anybody who makes that argument is basically handing you their I have a brain card and said, here, would you hold this for me? I don't have it anymore. They're just giving up their I have a brain card. And the left is very willing to do that, by the way. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, very willing to hand in their, uh, you know, I have a brain card. And I just, yep. but they do it we, regularly. And I, th- I guess then the, the question becomes is who's stupid are the people who hand in their brain card or the people who um, basically kind of like let it go. Don't do something about it. Don't complain about it. Don't say, whoa, 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 this, this, can't, this can't stand. Yep. Have you seen that become more so – since, say, the Clinton administration prior than prior to the Clinton administration? Because I, I think the Clinton administration was the start of all this rancor. And I think a lot of it came from, from James Carville and Dick Morris. I think they were the, the directors of this rancor. Your thoughts on that, George? That is an interesting point. Um... I mean, I wasn't on the inside of, you know, Washington at that, you know, I, I just like everybody else was, you know, living and leading my life. But I paid attention to these things. They mattered to me. I was involved in public policy when uh, Clinton was, was uh, president. I ran for Congress, in fact. So, I mean, I, you know, so I don't mean to suggest I was uh, oblivious, but I, I would I would I would basically say, let me let me quote to you or relate to you a story that Senator Wallop told me. Senator Wallop was a, was a senator beginning in the mid to late 70s, and he served through most of the Clinton years, but uh, retired from the Senate mm-hmm. uh, voluntarily after three terms or 18 years in the U.S. Senate. And his sense of things was that it was getting kind of crazy in the Senate. And he said this midway through the Clinton years and that it was a relatively new development. But he basically said it used to be that I could go to members of the other party and I could make a good argument and I could appeal to their sense of the Constitution matters, uh, results matter, we got to do what's best for the country, and that made a difference. He says, now when I go to them uh, to talk, basically it's, I can't talk to you. You know, just, no, no, no. It, you know, it has become this hyper-partisan crazy stuff. So mm-hmm. I would argue you're probably right. Sadly, you are right. Something changed there. There's no longer a rationality in the site. It's just a, just a, a, you know, screaming no, no, no. And you see this in Washington today. It doesn't matter sadly, what the proposal I am is. Right. It's bad. And sadly, I'm not right a lot. But that's just the way life is. Break time, George, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And we're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Here at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. Mr. John Forsyth Jr. is working the boards for us today. 
Don't go away. George will be right back. And on the other side, we'll let you know who our guests are for today. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos radio show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos radio show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. 
We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the safe zone. That is the safe zone for conservatives called the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And we're coming to you live from the studios of WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and simulcasting on stations in Tampa, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Macomb, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Indeed, 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 we are everywhere. Uh, as I mentioned, my co-host today is George Landreth. And George, we got a couple of great guests that we're going to be speaking with today. George? This is true. Yes. You were right about that. First of all, I guess um, what, at 4.05, we've got Megan Barth. And then at um, at uh, four thirty five, we've got uh, Mark Meckler, and I think they'll both be pretty interesting. I can give a quick rundown of what we might be talking about with folks. Um, should I um, should I tease them a little bit, yeah, or should ahead. I just leave it at that? Oh, let's tease them a little bit. Fair enough. Well, I think p- most of our listeners have probably heard that uh, that um, President Trump's advisor. Steve Bannon is no longer on the National Security Council, so we Megan Barth is going to talk about that. She's with the um, she's the founder and proprietor of ReaganBabe.com. That's Reagan as in Ronald Reagan and Babe as in you know Babe. I don't know, you know, like babe, babe Ruth, Babe in the Woods. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, it's uh, she is a nationally recognized uh, commentator, and uh, and she's going to talk about. What, what was going on there and, um, you know, kind of what the real story is. Because you, you've heard all kinds of yep. probably cr- crazy and wild rumors. I know that's hard to believe because in America we have a free press. So the idea that the free press might not give us reliable information is probably hard for most of our listeners to imagine. Can't imagine they probably, it. They probably cannot, think, oh, come on. Can't imagine it. Do Just can't imagine it. Uh, I know. It's... If you have a very fertile imagination, you might be able to ma- imagine it. But I, I understand why it's so hard. Yep. So anyhow, she'll give us the straight scoop on what's going on there. And then uh, Mark Meckler is the president of Citizens for Self Governance, and um, he's a you know he's a grassroots activist, and he's just been involved in this for a long time. He's one of the kind of the Tea Party originals with Tea Party Patriots and and so forth. Anyhow, he is going to talk to us about. Um, you know, Judge Gorsuch and um, and kind of what all this means and and how it happened and and we'll get kind of more deep into it than than we already have and I think uh, um, it'll be interesting to hear about everything from the nu- nuclear option or what I call it um, I call it the constitutional option. Right, um, George. Have and- you ever met Mark in your travels? Um, I have not met him. At least I don't think I have. Okay. So I, we, it's possible our paths are crossed and I'm not putting a face and a name together. But right, right. now I'd have to say no. OK, so we do have a couple of great guests and some interesting topics to uh, discuss today. So what else is on your radar screen? Well, you know, I was uh, one other thing I was g- going to say that I think is interesting. Uh, it's it's a little, we were talking about Susan Rice and the unmasking and everything and, and not necessarily get more into that, but to kind of some corollaries from that. I've watched her be interviewed now almost ad nauseum by, you know, people on her side. And 
she says the most insanely idiotic things, and they don't bother the follow up. For example, her the, her first statement about, you know, I don't know, even know what you're talking about. That was her first statement when she was asked about the unmasking of people. Her statement was, "I have no idea what you're talking about." That's just that's just you know, woo, crazy. I don't know. What do you? I mean, where'd you get that? stuff from. Well, that's insane. Now, now she says, well, yeah, I didn't do it for political reasons. Well, George, this is the same woman that after Benghazi was put, went out on all the Sunday morning news shows. Oh, it was a video. Oh, this was in, was in response to a video. Come on. You know, this is the same woman. And he, why should we believe her now? We, it, history has proven she was lying back then. So why should anyone believe her now? You know, this woman has absolutely zero, zero credibility. Zero credibility. Well, ultimately, she's just a political hack. Yes. And uh, you can give her a title and call her NASA security advisor. It doesn't change the fact that she's a political hack. <laughs> and... Um, so what she did isn't or terribly has shocking been political to me because, hack. after all, she's a political hack. Yeah, or a has-been political hack. I mean, since Barack Obama is not in office, she has no official title now. But she 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 was a political hack in the Obama administration. Right. She and Valerie Jared, and they're yeah. probably both very still very close friends to the Obamas. Yeah. But like so, I said, you know, like yeah, I said it's earlier, just, it's. it's the, the point, though, is the press isn't even trying. Yeah. But like because I said earlier, I George, they this, ask me about my inconsistent statements. When this starts to be investigating, they're going to say, well, they're picking on her because she's a woman or, oh, they're picking on her because she's a minority. Oh, they're picking on her because they're trying to get back at Barack Obama. No, they're investigating. They're investigating her because she might have broke the law. That's why it's nothing to do with her sex, her color, or who she knows. The investigator, it will be because of her actions that she broke the law. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, do you Just like the they liar, said with liar. Obama. Just like they said with Obama. Every time it was, oh, they're picking on him because he's the first black president. No, they were pointing out how wrong he was in everything that he was trying to do. This, this crazy idea of fundamentally changing America. When Americans, you know, I think when he was, that, he was in that mantra and that rhetoric during the campaign, people thought, oh, yeah, well, that's just another campaign slogan. But, George, I think it has been proven to the American people he was serious. He was dead serious. You know, you hear a lot about how Barack Obama is, was a big liar. And I, he, gave, he said a lot of whoppers. But there's certain things that he was being truthful at. Number one is when he said that, uh, oh, well, if the coal, power, coal industry wants to build power plants, let them do it because we're going to bankrupt them. And they're... Electric rates are going to necessarily skyrocket. You should have believed him then. And then this this thing about fundamentally changing America. You know, there was some truth that Barack Obama had said. Right. Let me ask you a quick question. If I'm having a conversation with uh, with my 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 wife and I say to her, "Oh dear, I love you so much." Now, I'd like to have a conversation what we can do to fundamentally change you because mm, I have oh lots boy. of issues with you. Uh, which what what's incompatible about that statement? Oh, man, I'll tell <laughs> probably you in the wedding ring you're wearing on the fourth finger of your left hand. <laughs> she would yeah. probably dump you, George. I mean, she would want a divorce. Right. Well, and that, that's what I find odd is people act like when you say, I don't believe that Barack Obama loves his country the same way most Americans do. And they act as if that's like, I can't believe you would say that. And to me, it's self-evident. If I saw a man say about his wife, 
Yeah, she's pretty good. But, I mean, I have to be honest. I really would like to fundamentally change just about oh, everything oh, oh, about that, that woman. Uh, oh. Then what he's saying is I don't really like this woman. I'd like a different one. Yeah. And I would argue that's what Barack Obama was saying. I don't like this country. I'd like a different one. Yeah, well, then and, he should have found – he should have went to a different country. Right. Try Egypt uh, or whatever. George, uh, break time one more time or once again. And you are listening to – the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7, whole bunch of other places, just about any time of the day. The Conservative Commandos radio show is being played. George and I'll be right back with more news and commentary. The Conservative Commandos radio show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos radio network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the Indiana Republican Assembly. And I'm her husband, J.D. Muneer. We won the election, but we must now install President Trump's nominees. We urge you to call the Capitol switchboard at 202-225-3121 and ask your senators to do their job. They need to confirm Judge Neil Gorsuch and remaining cabinet members. We the people never want to see another Berkeley. The First Amendment doesn't give you the right to commit acts of violence. It pains us to watch anarchy unfold on college campuses, bus stops, and coffee shops. Thomas Jefferson said, All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Let us join in unity to pray for America. Once again, the number to call is 202-225-3121. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for a rebroadcast of our show, check out our website, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. 
We're also being simulcast on radio stations in Tampa, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Long Beach, California, courtesy of AM FM 24-7. So, George, all right, so many resignations. I'll ask you about the, well, now I'll hold on to that because we're going to deal with that with Megan Barth. I was going to say we'll talk about uh, Steve Banyan, but um, maybe instead I'll ask you what's on your radar screen. Somebody's got to unmute the mic, George. Oh, there we go. There you, you caught go. me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think there's a couple things that are kind of interesting that are going on, and, and they're related. It's the lies that people tell about what's going on and what the Republicans are doing. One would be the um, – how many of have, – have you heard this story – um, the Republicans just passed this terrible bill, and now everyone can buy your uh, internet browser history, all your yeah. private information. Oh, yeah, that, that's been They're all over the news. They're going to be able to listen, you know, all this other stuff. Have you heard sure. that story? Yeah, it's been all over the news all week long. I yeah, mean, there, there goes those mean, greedy Republicans lie. once again. A complete lie. Tell us, okay. George, why it's a lie. I mean, give us the truth. Yeah. You know, I'll like you, I like I'll, to I'll say, give you a quick thing, and then we'll go on to the energy and climate sure. executive order stuff too, because they're again complete lies. But okay, so what happened was Barack Obama um, put <laughs> forth um, a bunch of stuff to, to, to basically take. It used to be the internet was regulated to the extent it was regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. Um, they decided to put it under the Federal Communications Commission and treat it like it was a public utility, which of course it yes. is not a public utility. Then they decided to take all the rules that used to exist and get rid of them, and they put new rules in place. The new rules they put in place did not apply to people like Google, who are big, big Republican – excuse me, big, big Democratic donors. Oh. Uh, the Google was a huge funder of Obama, and the Google people were in and out of the White House all the time. They practically slept there, okay? But they were exempted. So courts held this up. And, and weren't allowing it to go forward. So none of that change was actually implemented yet. Okay. And yet the way they tell the story is okay. – and the change was not a good one, by the way. Um, and they make it sound like the Republicans, by getting rid of that, are just going to have this wild, wild, wild story. Anyone they want? And the answer is no. It goes back to what it used to be, which is the Federal Trade Commission. And I know one of the Federal Trade Commissioners – Maureen Olhausen, mm -hmm. she is very committed to privacy, but she's per, per, she's interested in having market mechanisms achieve that and not have government spend all of its time trying to – because Obama was not trying to create uh, privacy for people. He was trying to create government control of the internet under the guise of privacy. At any rate, so that's the real story. And yet, Same that's thing with net neutrality. My, my son's been asked by a friend, oh – Look at all these people who used to get money, who got get money from, uh, and then they name off some communications company. Obviously, they're in the they're bought and paid for. It's like, oh, but you didn't say that when Barack Obama passed this crazy rule that that is bad for the internet and bad for Americans and only good for Google. You didn't say that then. They they never do, George. They only say things. They only talk about things. You know, when it's those greedy, mean, heartless Republicans and conservatives. Right. Another interesting sort of thing on the uh, dishonesty of the uh, press. Today, or no, I guess it's tomorrow. Tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of um, when um, the uh, – you know, I don't know if you remember when uh, the Competitive Enterprise Institute was, was subpoenaed by uh, a, an attorney general demanding a decade's worth of documents. And we were listed on that subpoena as well. Um, they were subpoenaing uh, ExxonMobil and other energy companies f for all this stuff because they wanted to uh, – um, they were arguing that there was some – I, I don't even quite sure what their argument was. But basically they, what they were really trying to do is say, you have not gotten on board with the president's uh, climate change mm -hmm. agenda, so we're going to try to harass you and punish you. Mm -hmm. By, by this. Um, and um, so tomorrow will be the one year anniversary of them trying that ploy. Of course, uh, judges have, uh, um, you know, 
put it, put the brakes on that. But the bottom line is, but that, but it's not for lack of them having tried. Is my point. So one year anniversary of another of Barack Obama's uh, overreaches, another of the left's overreaches. Well, in that particular. was an, George. And, uh, George, I, w- I would venture that that was another one of his promises. Remember, he he, he, he told people. Punish your punish your enemies, reward your friends. So there, were, you know, just before yeah. the break, which is why Solyndra got yep. uh, hundreds of millions of taxpayer yep. dollars. And that's why and Google why, got why special Frontier treatment Freedom was targeted, and why we got uh, subpoenas from v- the Virgin Islands yep. Attorney General <laughs> in cooperation <laughs> with the uh, Justice Department. The Virgin and, Islands and, and Attorney General, are. the Virgin Islands Attorney General of all people. Yeah, very funny, I know. Oh, God almighty. Yeah. But anyhow, so this this carries on now because, uh, you know, Trump has, uh, mm-hmm. President Trump put forward um, a, a, an energy e- climate executive order. And basically what he did is he just undid a bunch of the bad stuff that uh, Obama had done that was doing precisely what you mentioned, necessarily making energy more expensive, necessarily mm-hmm. shutting down. I mean, America is the Saudi Arabia of coal. I know we've got lots of oil. I mean, we've got lots of petroleum, too, lots of natural gas. That's yeah. great. But we also have lots of coal. And given the fact that we now have technology to burn it cleanly, I don't know why it would make any sense to simply kind of unilaterally disarm. We're the Saudi Arabia of coal. It actually turns out we're also the Saudi Arabia of oil. So maybe that makes us the United States of, of, of coal. But, it, <laughs> but, but anyhow, George, while we're, you, while we're on this subject, let me just say something that I've never been a great fan of Governor Chris Christie. Okay. But well, one of the good things that. that Chris Christie did, in my opinion, well, I think he did two good things. He stopped a tunnel that was going to cost the New Jersey taxpayers billions of dollars. He stopped that. And he also got us out of something called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative called REGI. And what REGI was, it, it was a cap and trade organization, much the same as Al Gore once the country to get into but because the country wasn't moving fast enough the north three eastern states of like maine vermont new hampshire massachusetts connecticut rhode island new york new jersey got into this organization called the regional regional greenhouse gas initiative and what it was it was a cap and trade scheme just like the one that al gore once to perpetrate against the American people. Well, Chris Christie pulled us out of that. And he's kept us out of it for the last six, seven years. Well, his term is coming to an end. And it's very likely we may get we may be getting another Democrat governor. You know, the, the state legislature is polluted with Democrats. Well, they want to bring this back now. They want to bring this this useless piece of rotting sacks of fecal fecal matter, as you call it, George, they want to bring it back to New Jersey that is going to necessarily skyrocket our electric and utility rates. But that's, that's what liberals do. And why do they do that? Because they want to help the little person. Because the little person is definitely going to be benefited by paying substantially more for... Um, energy if you're a single mom and uh and you're trying to figure out how to pay your bills right it's awesome when your electric bill doubles i know that and so they're doing this for the little people right oh right right they always do it for the little guy it's for right. the little guy you know the people who who we represent they don't give a damn about the little guy right. george what they're interested in is political power personal gain taking care of themselves, their friends, and their family. That's all they care about, at the expense of the taxpayer. But, you know, they're not much different than a lot of dictators around the world, George. Uh, When Fidel Castro died, I can remember you and I talking about how the world has lost one of the richest men on, on on the planet, Fidel Castro, the dictator of North Korea, a country whose people are starving. He's a really rich guy. The people that head up Venezuela, another place where people can't find anything to eat, he's a rich guy too. George, sorry, was not 
looking at the clock, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philly, around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7, Red Nation Rising Radio, Red State Talk Radio. We are indeed everywhere. We're everywhere. Dunk away on the other side. We'll be speaking with Megan Parth, Megan Barth, creator of ReaganBabe.com. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Business man, yeah. drink my wine. 
Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Yes, you are. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth. President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcast, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. Or at 11 a.m., log on to Red Nation Rising Radio, or or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. Or you can hear any time of the day from your phone by calling 832-999-1199. George Landeth, our first guest, is with us. Please make the introduction. Absolutely. We've got Megan Barth. She's the founder of ReganBabe.com. That's Regan as in Ronald and Babe as in Ruth.com. <laughs> and um, she's also a nationally recognized political commentator. She has uh, been a also a woman's advocate and Megan, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Thank you so much. It's good to be back. Absolutely. Um, so what what is your take on what's been going on? We read, of course, yesterday, I guess, the news broke that um, Steve Bannon was no longer on the, um, you know, he didn't play the same role as he had on the National Security Council. So I guess the question is, what does that mean? A lot of press stories say it means that uh, there's a big up sh- big shake up at the White House. Things are in disarray. The sky is falling. You know, the usual, right? Well, right. That's what the press wants us to believe. And and as we both know, you don't find the truth in the narrative and headlines that the press regurgitates from Democrat talking points. What? Um, yeah, I know. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, that's why I started ReaganBabe.com, because I wasn't seeing the truth, and I knew the truth was out there. I was seeing yellow journalism and sensationalism in the headlines. And so, you know, there's a lot of reports and a lot of reports floating around. So, you know, you gather and observe all the information and, and ingest it. And what I can uh, deduce from all of that is that it was a temporary position. This wasn't supposed to be a position that was permanent. Uh, Bannon was supposed to go in there and actually monitor Mike Flynn, and until the political assassination of Mike Flynn occurred, or when the political assassination of Mike um, Michael Flynn occurred, uh, the other role that he was supposed to take on, Steve Bannon, was to basically depoliticize the NSC. And we know now, especially with all of the, the scandal related to Susan Rice and, Demo- and uh, Obama operatives, compromising the intelligence agencies by politicizing them and using them as a political weapon uh, in order to destroy a political campaign and a transition team and an administration. And so it seems as though Steve Bannon's job is done in that role, and so his removal has allowed others to a seat at the table, others like Nikki Haley, uh, Rick Perry, Mike Pompeo, etc., and so Steve Bannon still has the security clearance he had prior to his departure. He still has entree into the meetings. 
Um, and so really nothing has changed except for his seat at the table, which from what I understand reading reports, is that he didn't attend many NSC meetings. As, as I said, his function over Mike Flynn obviously um, disappeared, but uh, his ability to kind of, I guess, deconstruct uh, the politicized administrative state within the NSC and other agencies, uh, or at least the NSC, was, was complete. Interesting. So this isn't evidence uh, that uh, Donald Trump's uh, presidency is imploding and, uh, and we are all about uh, to become a banana republic. Well, I think we've already kind of become a banana republic, and it wasn't in the first 70 days of the Donald Trump administration when you look at the abuse of power. about years ago. Uh, you know, when you, what, uh, we have to have, which the Democrats don't want to have, we have to have a civil, li civil liberties discussion. We have to acknowledge that our intelligence agencies were compromised and politicized. They weren't gathering data and in, in conducting an investigation related to our national security. Uh, they were gathering information on a campaign and a transition team in order to sabotage the yeah, incoming president enemies. and his agenda. Right. No, you're exactly right. That is the very stuff of which banana republics are made of. This is the sort of thing that happens in totalitarian regimes um, that ha have a, you know, one that happens in totalitarian regimes, but it also happens in kind of these totalitarian slash banana republic, uh, you know, things that, but they, they, they weaponized the uh, IRS, they weaponized a number of other agencies, they uh, weaponized, of all things, the National Security Council. Um, right. And, and you're exactly and the right. That is, if that's not <laughs> Banana Republic, nothing else is. I would argue that the, the country was uh, Banana Republicized, if you will, uh, about eight years ago. That was part of the well, yeah, and transformation. We, right. And, and we see a, a long line of history related to your claims. Uh, Barack Obama used the IRS against conservative organizations. The DOJ was used against Gibson Guitars in a raid because the CEO was a uh, high net worth Republican donor. And then let's not forget poor Catherine Engelbrecht. You know, Catherine Engelbrecht and her husband owned a, a business in Houston, Texas, and they operated for, I don't know, about a uh, couple decades uh, without any federal agencies ever knocking on their door, without ever an IRS audit, until she established True the Vote to bring voter integrity and election integrity back into Houston. Once she received her 501c3, she was targeted by five different federal agencies. She was put under multiple audits from various agencies. She had fines, uh, et cetera, and it nearly uh, caused the bankruptcy of her business. And so the political enemies list of Barack Obama and the Democrats uh, is obvious and very long, and he did not stop uh, but using his executive authority and influence to, to politicize various government agencies. But I thought there wasn't a smidgen of corruption there. Right, right. Just, <laughs> just like there wasn't a smidgen of proof. And, you know, I really kind of blame the Republicans um, a, a little bit on allowing this type of abuse of power to kind of consume uh, D.C. and the surrounding agencies by where... When Lois Lerner uh, decided to take the fifth, uh, she actually suspended her Fifth Amendment rights when she read an opening statement. I mean, they right. could have. No, you're exactly right. I argue that so many right. times. When you're when you are a, uh, you don't have the right to selectively invoke the Fifth Amendment. You basically just have the right to invoke the Fifth Amendment. But once you start making factual assertions, you can't then later say, "Oh, I don't want to answer that question." And, right. and yet that's the game she played. I don't even know why the Republicans put up with that. They should have, I, I they should have immediately said, no, you'll answer the question now. She said, I refuse to. They should have had the sergeant arms come in and say, take her down to the basement, lock her up. They actually have a place downstairs they can lock you up. And they should have. Right. It, it seems as though we're bringing a wiffle bat to a baseball game. And um, that's been kind of the historic uh, nature of how Republicans fight. And, and so I, now we've given, they've got complete control. Uh, they've got both the House and the Congress and have had uh, for a few years. 
and now they have the presidency. So th- we've given them everything that they've wanted, and now it's time to play hardball, uh, especially against the corruption and graft that is left over uh, from the prior administration. And the drain the swamp, I don't understand either why James Comey is still the head of the FBI. Uh, he and Mike Rogers, in testimony, in open testimony, and in front of the Intelligence Committee, swore that they weren't, uh, uh, they didn't uh, have any awareness of an investigation going on within the Trump transition team outside of Russia, outside of the Russia investigation. Well, that turns out to be a complete, absolute, potential lie because I would assume uh, that both agencies were very aware in conducting the investigation. Uh, that there were these investigations and these unmaskings going on since July of 2016. Right. We've got to take a break. Um, I'm wondering, can you stay with us through this break? Because there's lots more I'd love to talk with you about. Uh, Yeah, I've got until about 1.25, which is 4.25 your time. 4.25, okay. Then... um, Rick, should we take a really quick break now, or should we plow? Yeah, we'll take a quick break. So hold on with us for uh, just two minutes. Okay, we'll Megan. take a quick one, and then we'll be right back, and uh, it'll be great. But uh, we really appreciate you being with us. We're coming to you live from the Conservative, Com- Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, which is our flagship station in Philadelphia. And, of course, as Rick has said, around the world... Uh, on a number of other stations and the internet. American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMFM 24-7. Don't go away. Rick and I and Megan will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty Health Share. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. This is Pastor Christina Lamanier, chaplain for the Indiana Republican Assembly. And I'm her husband, J.D. Manier. We won the election, but we must now install President Trump's nominees. We urge you to call the Capitol switchboard at 202-225-3121 and ask your senators to do their job. They need to confirm Judge Neil Gorsuch and remaining cabinet members. We the people never want to see another Berkeley. The First Amendment doesn't give you the right to commit acts of violence. It pains us to watch anarchy unfold on college campuses, bus stops, and coffee shops. Thomas Jefferson said, 
All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Let us join in unity to pray for America. Once again, the number to call is 202-225-3121. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and Rick Trader. And George, I'll make this short and sweet. Our time is limited with Megan Barth. Please pick up the interview. Megan, we were talking um, about, you know, kind of, we started talking about the uh, whole Bannon uh, thing and the way it was spun and it was a big deal. Um, I was wondering if you are comfortable talking a little about with the uh, chairman uh, Nunez is stepping down or not stepping down but recusing himself one of my troubles with this is I don't actually see that he broke any laws uh, apparently the Democrats are incensed that they weren't informed before he went and talked to the president about what he'd learned um, but I'm not aware of a single law that uh, uh, you know violates and yet they've been going crazy over this for the last two three weeks and yet um, we know that laws have been broken I guess we don't know for sure if it seems likely it was uh, Susan Rice, but we know for sure that laws were broken, that people were unmasked for political reasons, and their names were uh, released to the public, which is a leak, which uh, is a felony. We, we know that happened. We just figure, have to figure out exactly who it is with certainty. Um, and yet there's no real uh, interest in that topic uh, from either the uh, same people in Congress who are outraged with, uh, with Chairman Nunez or, uh, for that matter, the people uh, in the press and so forth. So I guess I'm asking you, can you make some sense of that for me? Yeah, I I really can't make any sense of it. I I don't agree necessarily that the fact that he stepped down when he did nothing wrong, uh, this is in the wake of uh, uh, many um, ethics violations purported or at least filed by the Democrats related to uh, classified information, which, which is the most hypocritical thing I've ever heard. I tweeted out on Reagan underscore baby that if Nunez had just destroyed 30,000 documents, uh, the Democrats, and, and used a private server for, uh, you know, top secret information, the Democrats would just claim that he uh, acted uh, extremely carelessly and dismissed it. Uh, so we're giving the Democrats basically, um, you know, we're, we're handing them both ways. They want it both ways, and we're kind of acquiescing to that those demands. Um, you know, I, I believe that his... Uh, replacement out of Texas, and forgive me, I don't recall his name right now, um, you know, will do a good job, but this is political assassination. Uh, This is what the Democrats have practiced for the last eight years, either through the weaponization of of agencies, uh, the dismissal of Hillary Clinton's crimes and and, uh, high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, And so, you know, if Trump really wants to fight, uh, you know, you bring a gun to a gunfight, you don't bring a knife. I'd say once he replaces James Comey and all of his cabinet positions have been filled, reopen uh, lowest, the lowest learner, uh, you know, debacle. Reopen the investigation into Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. I mean, let's start holding the Democrats to account as they so want to hold us to account on, on baseless allegations. I could not agree more with that. I mean, I think uh, Lois Lerner definitely needs to... Uh uh, do jail time. I mean, what she did was criminal. Mm-hmm. It's what she did was far more corrosive to our national. Uh, you know, if she had robbed banks, that would be less damaging to society. And I'm not advocating robbing banks. I'm simply saying that when you weaponize the government to attack people who are critical of policies of a particular official in the government, um, that actually attacks the very foundation of our free society. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that statement or not, but that's how I see it. Well, no, ab- absolutely. And, and when you look at uh, the corrosive infection of this politicization of our federal agencies, you know, this is true tyranny when people fear their government. Uh, this is tyranny, and that was Barack Obama's legacy. You know, one of uh, Donald Trump's, um, you know, most recent successes, as well as a list of successes, is undoing all of Barack Obama's executive orders related to the environment, uh, jobs, 
uh, all the regulations, removing the regulations. And so with these successes are going to come more and more people attracted to his policies, but the noise that is being created around his administration by all of these baseless accusations without an, a scintilla of evidence related to Russia. The, the, the Democrats want to co uh, conflate Russia into the Susan Rice issue. They are completely two separate issues. Uh, did Russia meddle in our elections? That remains to be seen. But the evidence shows that if they did meddle, they did not collude with Trump and they didn't affect the outcome of the election. Okay, so let's move on. And right. the, the, the number of, of breaches into various agencies through hackers, whether those hackers were from China or from Russia or other rogue regimes, happened over the eight, course of eight years uh, where the Pentagon was breached. Uh, and many different agencies were breached while Barack Obama sat back and the Democrats did absolutely nothing. When the Democrats learned that the DNC was hacked, they didn't put, they didn't even alert the FBI. They didn't put in the proper measures to protect their information. And then they right. want to point fingers at Donald Trump. I mean, this is the hypocrisy that the Democrats simply do not want to acknowledge because they need to create a smoke screen. They need to have a boogeyman. They need to sabotage the Trump administration because he is the biggest threat to uh, Barack Obama's legacy and their goals to transform this country into a socialist state. Absolutely. I, I know that you've got to go now, so what I want to ask you to do is just tell our listeners how they can follow your work, read mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing, and get more information from you about whatever happens tomorrow and the next day. Sure. My website is rakenbabe.com. We're going through a whole redesign and rebranding effort. Uh, that will be launched next week. Um, it will be more of a multimedia site. And then my uh, Facebook page is Reagan Baby, and my Twitter feed is Reagan underscore Baby. ReaganBabe.com, Reagan Baby on Facebook, Reagan underscore Baby on Twitter. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Always informative and interesting. And uh, with that, I just want to uh, let our listeners know that we are coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios. <laughs> In Philadelphia, WNJC, of course, that's our flagship station. As Rick has uh, alerted you earlier in the show, there are uh, radio stations. Hey, George, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to hold it here for another couple of minutes, and we'll go to break at the bottom of the half hour. Megan Barr, thank you so much for joining us on the Conservative Commandos. Take care. God bless. Hey, hi. Thanks, guys. And, Georgia, interesting, interesting article coming up today on National Review. And it starts out, yeah, it starts out, if a New York nonprofit wants to speak about political issues, it faces intrusive and dangerous disclosure requirements. George, what's going on in New York that um, people need to know about? Well, for one, it's, it's the mayor. You have uh, Mayor Bla you know, de Blasio is uh, a, a crazy lunatic leftist freak. Um, and um, so evidently he doesn't like it when people criticize him. Something he has in common with uh, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson had no tolerance for people disagreeing with him. Um, and uh, neither does evidently uh, Mayor de Blasio. So it looks like they basically are uh, going to basically are going to say if you're a nonprofit group, the price of being a nonprofit group is you can only say things that we like. That's that's a troubling development. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine like during World War, you know, excuse me, during the Revolutionary War, uh, the king, the king says to Thomas Paine, "Oh yeah, you can't write all that stuff about freedom and liberty and common sense." You know that pamphlet? No, no, right. no, no, no. If you want to be, yeah, that's that's out there. You can't say that stuff. I'm sorry. Well, <coughs> George that was their position. George, this flies in the face, in my opinion, of the First Amendment. Okay. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> What bothers and troubles me from these things is, is like de Blasio or the governor of New York, they become, in a sense, a, a dictator or a monarchy that, how do you, how do you, can you, can you sue these people, George? Can you sue well, you these can. people individually yeah, and, the and problem, separately? Of course, is because you have constitutional <laughs> rights and historically, um, people would sue, um, 
it, when they were when people violated your constitutional rights, you could actually sue them and get um, not just to stop them from doing that, but but for personal liability for what yeah. they've done. Yeah, so I'm looking. Um, and I think we have to be more uh, prepared to do that, and I think we have to allow that to happen on the other side because it is now the left that does this. Yeah. You know, it was always the left, actually. Right. Um, hey, George. But, sorry to interrupt you one more time, but it is that break time. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos with George Landreth and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and simulcast on stations in Tampa, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Don't go away. George and I'll be right back with our next guest, Mark Meckler. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty HealthShare could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty HealthShare. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty HealthShare offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty HealthShare offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax-related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855 855- 585-4237 or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org that's libertyhealthshare.org What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com.
The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Greetings. This is George Landreth and Rick Trader on the Conservative Commandos Network Radio we want to remind you, if you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. You can always log on at 11 a.m. to rednationrisingradio.com, and at midnight you can log on to redstatetalkradio.com. And with your phone and this number, you can always listen in as well, 832-999-1199. Uh, and... Uh, I want to introduce our uh, our next guest. Guest, we have Mark Meckler with us. He is the president of Citizens for Self Governance. That sounds like a dangerous idea. You know, you got to be careful of that. It's like uh, you know, new ideas. Ooh. Anyhow, uh, I'm sure that uh, Barack Obama's IRS was worried about a group as subversive as. Uh, you know, as, as this. Anyhow, but Mark was also one of the nation's most effective grassroots advocates, is one of the nation's most effective grassroots advocates. Um, he's the co-founder and, um, and was a national coordinator uh, for the Tea Party Patriots. He, um, he's been involved in, in these causes for quite a while. And, um, for example, he has been somebody who's worked and, and appeared regularly on a wide variety of media. For example, MSNBC, so he, he goes in, ABC, NBC. In those areas, he goes into uh, enemy territory behind the lines, so to speak. But he also goes on Fox News and, 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 and Fox Business and so forth. But he's all over the place. He's, he's a little bit like the conservative commandos. He's everywhere. And uh, he's the co-author of Tea Party Patriots, The Second American Revolution. And he's a regular writer at Breitbart. So, um, and uh, American Spectator and selfgovern.com. He's also an attorney, but don't hold that against him, as, as am I. And he uh, is interested in, uh, does a lot of work in Internet privacy law. Mark, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. Yeah, always great to be back here at home among friends instead of in the enemy camp. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, just based on, uh, we want to get in and talk about uh, Judge Gorsuch, but it just occurred to me, given your expertise in Internet privacy, um, we talked a little bit earlier, and I made the point that the story everyone's hearing, that the Republicans passed a bill that makes it so that uh, people can buy your uh, uh, Internet uh, 
you know, browsing history is pure Boulder Dash. Um, I, tr- I tried to explain it briefly, but you're, you're probably the real expert. I just play one on TV sometimes. So <laughs> No, I agree with you. Is. Is Boulder Dash. Honestly, the way I look at it, I've been doing Internet privacy law since the early 90s, so the, literally the early days of the web. And I think the fundamental thing for people to remember when it comes to their Internet privacy, there is none. <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. Uh, good personal Internet security is very hard to come by. When you're browsing, people are usually capturing your browser history. There are some ways around that. But for most of us, for most average citizens, the most important thing you can remember online is people can see what you're doing. People can track what you're doing. These, these uh, companies place cookies. You can block some of them. But mostly, they, they have better technology than you do. Sleuths or snoopers have better technology than you do. I recommend being common sense careful. Uh, but beyond that, wh- there's just not a lot we can do. And I honestly don't pay a lot of attention to what Congress does about it because they're going to, these companies are going to do it one way or another. Yeah. Well, um, it, one of the things I thought was interesting about the whole debate as well was that the, uh, um, the regulations that Obama did, he basically tried to change the Internet into treating it like it was a public utility, um, got rid of all the protections that existed previously at the Federal Trade Commission, created new ones that benefited uh, Google, and then, of course, the court put the kibosh on it, so none of that actually happened. And then we're told when the Republicans changed the law that they somehow reversed all the protections you're currently enjoying, which, in fact, they were not enjoying any protections. Because what Obama had done, even if you thought it were, was protective, which I agree with you, it was not, um, it wasn't enacted yet because the courts had, uh, it was mired in litigation. Yeah, you know, I think so. you nailed it. And again, I think this is important. This is kind of above the heads of most folks. And if you feel like that and you're listening to this, and I advise people on this stuff all the time, don't worry about it because mostly that's what they intended to be. And mostly, again, I, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but you always got to go back to the fact that the bottom line is if people want your data, they've got your data. If people want to know what you're doing, mostly they're going to figure out what you're doing. So if you're doing things and you don't want people to know about it, then uh, I would pretty much stay off your computer. Hey, George or Mark, can I, Mark, can I jump in from here for a minute? Uh, Absolutely. Maybe I'm thinking about this because I watched the movie The Social Network over the weekend found it very interesting. Um, If people are worried about their internet privacy, Facebook was created on people volunteering their private information. (laughs) So watch what you put online, too. Watch what you volunteer. Well, that's especially important for younger people uh, because they grew up with this stuff and they don't think about the idea that they're, they're putting their private information online. You know, when I'm hiring people, one of the very first things I do is go look at their Facebook page. And uh, you can tell the age of a person. It's, it's honestly often hard to find much information on somebody who's older like me in my mid-50s. But you get down into people that are in their 30s and below, and you just find out a plethora of things about them. Some of them not very flattering. Yes. Uh, some of them very personal. People think they're only sharing that stuff with their friends. But generally speaking, they don't know how to restrict that. It's widely shared. They're affecting their lives, their futures. You know, my kids have been forewarned. I've, I've a teenager and one who's 21, and they're smart enough. They don't put anything crazy on their pages, whether they're doing it or not, because they understand that it affects their future employment and livelihood. Yep, that's good advice. Um, you know, they say uh, you know they say if you if you don't want to see it on the front page of the Washington Post, don't put it in an email. <laughs> no, I, I think that's highly accurate, and that's another thing is I think when people are thinking about internet privacy. One of the things they don't think about is just their own email. And so they exchange private emails with people. They think that those those are sacrosanct and nobody's ever going to know what's in them. The problem is you don't know what's going on with the other person's email. You don't know who they're forwarding it to. You don't know who they're willing to share it with. And maybe you write something that's off color, a little bit sketchy because it's a friend or an acquaintance. Well, you don't know. Ten years from now, you might be running for office. And that acquaintance might be on the other side of the aisle, and they remember that sketchy email from you, and they decide to share it with people. Well, isn't this exactly what happened to Hillary Clinton in the in the later days of the campaign, that her emails got caught up with the Anthony Weiner's computer, and right away Comey says, wait, we found more emails, even though that all the emails on, on uh, Weiner's computer were already out there. I mean, that really hurt her. 
It did, and so, and again, she didn't, you know, she never intended for those emails to be on that computer. Right. They were going to an entirely different person. So the point is, if you put in an email, just understand that at some point it can be shared. There, there are times even when I'm writing a private communication to somebody by email, and I think, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't feel comfortable if this got out there. Just because I'm trying to say something private to somebody, in that case, what I do is pick up the phone and talk to the person. You know, go to the old-fashioned yep. telephone, pick up the phone, and have the conversation. Absolutely. Pay for a way to communicate. As soon as you put that into digits, that thing's out there forever and can be widely shared. Well, you know, I'll tell you a little story. A little, I had to give somebody my bank account routing number. So rather than put it in an email, I called them up and I says, Hey, can I get just give it to you over the phone? What's that for? Hey, Mark, we got to take a quick two-minute break. Absolutely. Could, could you hold on first, please? And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Lander, president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom. Yours truly, Rick Trader. And our guest this segment is Mark Meckler. He's the president of Citizens for Self-Alliance. Don't go away, George, and I'll be right back with our guest. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the Indiana Republican Assembly. And I'm her husband, J.D. Meneer. We won the election, but we must now install President Trump's nominees. We urge you to call the Capitol switchboard at 202-225-3121 and ask your senators to do their job. They need to confirm Judge Neil Gorsuch and remaining cabinet members. We the people never want to see another Berkeley. The First Amendment doesn't give you the right to commit acts of violence. It pains us to watch anarchy unfold on college campuses, bus stops, and coffee shops. Thomas Jefferson said, All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Let us join in unity to pray for America. Once again, the number to call is 202-225-3121. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show 
at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Greetings, fellow deplorables. You, of course, are listening to Rick Trader and George Landreth and our special guest, Mark Meckler. And I just want to remind you, if you want to hear a rebroadcast of the show today, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. You can always log on to rednationrisingradio.com, 11 a.m. At, at midnight. You can check out redstatetalkradio.com. And with your phone and this phone number, you can always listen in, 832-999-1199. Nine nine. We've been talking with uh, Mark Meckler. He is the president of Citizens for Self Governance. Sounds like a subversive, dangerous organization. Um, he uh, has a long history of cavorting with such people, like the Tea Party Patriots and so forth. Um, he probably believes in freedom and stuff like that too. Um, I'm sure if the IRS uh, heard about this a few years ago, they were hot on his trail. At any rate. Uh, uh, all jesting aside, uh, you know, well, I got to interrupt you right there. They yes, were not sir. only hot on our trail; they investigated, pursued, targeted our local Tea Party group, and actually, our organization, Citizens for Self Governance, funds the only class action lawsuit against the IRS for that. Today, we've spent in excess of two million dollars on that lawsuit. We're getting ready to go to trial. We'll be in trial somewhere between September and November of this year. I intend to blow that whole thing sky high. Well, I am glad to hear of that because uh, I was an or- we were an organization that was also um, targeted and um, Frontiers of Freedom. And they don't like that word freedom. That that bothers them. You know, patriot, freedom, all that kind of stuff. They don't like the uh, word conservative either. You know, George, I've told you, I've told this story here on the uh, show that uh, I'm I'm in my later part of my 60s. Okay, my wife and I, we got married in our our late 50s in all the years that she has filed returns in all the years that I filed the returns in the years that we filed joint returns. Neither one of us was ever audited until I started something called the conservative commandos radio show and had to put that on my tax return. And I got audited. Is that mere coincidence or what? Dangerous stuff. I mean, no wonder. I mean, you know, freedom is dangerous. People could get hurt. Well, and that is, look, the federal government and the state governments, by the way, have been weaponized against conservatives. That's the intent of the radical left. Liberalism always turns into fascism. Fascism always uses state power to take citizens to object to what the state is doing and crush them. That's just the nature of the beast. That's what we're facing today in America. Yeah, that is the, that's the truth. Well, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about uh, Judge Gorsuch. Um, the, you know, the uh, there's uh, normally the the Senate has historically worked with a 60 vote uh, to get closure debate. It's it's not a constitutional provision. It's a it's a rule of the Senate. Uh, the constitutional provision is that the, that the Senate has the right to make its own rules. And so it has always had a rule which basically said that um, in order to stop debate, you needed a supermajority. That's changed at different times. It's been different numbers before. It's been 66. It's been 60, et cetera. But, but in modern history, it's been 60. And uh, so this, is, this will be changing. If you were to listen to the press, you'd be led to believe that the Repu- this is the Republicans' idea. This has never happened before. It's unprecedented. It's outrageous. Well, I mean, here's what's unprecedented and outrageous. Never before in American history has the nomination of a Supreme Court jurist been filibustered. Traditionally, this has been, for most of our history, a bipartisan affair where if the justice was qualified, meaning they met the base qualifications for a Supreme Court justice, and certainly Gorsuch meets those, he was unanimously confirmed by the Senate for the lower court position, then you didn't filibuster him. You just didn't do it. And so, this well, is, let me just ask you real quick, 
most Republicans did not like Elena Kagan. I remember speaking out against her, and I remember not being overly impressed with Sotomayor. My reason for being against them was essentially I knew they, they couldn't pass a high school civics test because they didn't understand what separation of powers was and what limitations on powers were and that the court did not have executive or legislative power. Having said that, did the Republicans... Um, did they, at the time they were in the minority, but did they use the, uh, the filibuster to stop those nominations? They neither used it, nor did they threaten to use it. They essentially did what, exactly what you said. They questioned her, gave the hard questions. Uh, that was their form of opposition. And then when it came time to vote, a uh, large number of Republicans voted for those uh, nominees. Those nominees were no doubt, whether you or I like their philosophy, they were no doubt qualified to sit on the court. That's been the standard in the past. The Democrats standard. Remember, they pulled the Reed rule, which is really the nuclear thing, which is they said they made it to a simple majority for all other appointees other than the Supreme Court, lower courts and federal appointees. So they changed the rules when they were in the majority. They were warned at the time that the Republicans would use those rules against them, use those changes against them. They were warned that the Republicans would change the rule in the Supreme Court if they did it on the lower courts. And what I have to say for the Republicans today kudos for having the cojones to do it because i wonder about the republicans they usually don't have the spine to do anything and god bless them for standing up and doing it today uh, i couldn't agree more um you know my i mean don't get me wrong i i i think the filibuster has uh value but, but the problem is it doesn't have value when we're the only people who have to live with it in other words if every uh, four years or every eight years uh, when we want to accomplish something, we have to get 60 votes, and then when they're in charge, they only have to get 40. It'd be a little like playing a football game, and when I score a touchdown, I get two points, and when you score a touchdown, you get 12. Yeah, I mean... It, you You're going to win. There's, there's another thing that's really outrageous in this media narrative. It's that, you know, the, there are people saying, well, now that the Republicans did this, remember that when the Democrats are back in power, which someday they surely will be, they're going to do the same thing. And there's an underlying premise there that if the Republicans hadn't done this, the Democrats wouldn't do it. I right, mean, I'm that's just straight up, that's lie. insanity. The Democrats play slash throat, brass knuckle politics. They already proved what they do with the rules when they have the chance. They would do it again in a hot minute if they were in the majority. So it's just stupid to not for if the Republicans had not done it again. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep using kudos for cojones for the Republicans. I'm proud of them. I don't get to say that about the Republicans in Congress very often. God bless McConnell <laughs> and the rest of the Republicans in the Senate for standing up and gut-punching the Democrats. Could not agree more with you on that one. We've got to basically, uh, we've got to get ready to, to shut down so that the next show can be on because, you know, the, we have these uh, funny things on uh, radio called uh, time limitations and deadlines. But I want folks to be able to know where they can follow you. So can you give us a quick... Um, you got you know, it. Just yeah, where are the best place the best to place. follow your work and keep up on what you're doing? The best place is if you believe that the, the citizens own the country and not the government owns the citizens, if you believe we need to take back our power, then you can follow what we're doing at conventionofstates.com. It's not up to us. It's not up to guys on the air. It's up to you guys out there in listener land. Conventionofstates.com. Get signed up and be part of the solution. Very good. We appreciate it. Rick? Our time is up, isn't it? Yep. Mark Beckler, thank you for joining us today as a guest. I also want to thank Megan Barth. I want to thank Mr. John Forsyth, Jr. for working the boards and Mr. George Landreth for sharing the microphone with me today. But for right now, we got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio. 1360 AM. WNJC. Washington Township. Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. 
It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org.